Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about fermented foods and you. So what is fermentation? The most basic definition of fermentation is the chemical breakdown of a substance by bacteria, yeast, or other microorganisms. Some examples of common fermented products we see all the time are wine, beer, sauerkraut, pickles, cheese, yogurt, and kombucha. So, you may be asking me, Josh, why fermentation? Well, let's talk about your health and let's talk about your happiness. In naturally fermented foods, there's millions of bacteria that will grow and form. These bacteria are known as probiotics. These probiotics are crucial to the health and environment of your gut, also known as our microbiome. Gut bacteria produces hundreds of neurochemicals. So, what happens when we have a healthy and a happy gut? Well, our mental health improves. Studies have shown that up to 90% of our serotonin is produced through our gut. And serotonin being one of the main chemicals in our brain that makes us happy. So what does this mean for you? Um, well, you know, if you're not eating the best, then you're not necessarily the happiest. Maybe you're in a slump. Well, let's take a look at the things you're eating. Are they providing you nutrients? Are they providing you with good sustenance, things that will help improve your body? Or are they junk food? Maybe take a look at fermented foods and other foods that will improve your microbiome. So what can you do? Well, number one thing is, let's make some food. If you don't feel like it, that's okay also. You can easily buy fermented foods all over the place. Sauerkraut, yogurts, etc. Just follow along. Maybe you'll get inspired. So, what do we need? Today, I'm going to show you how to make a fermented jalapeno hot sauce. Let's start off with our tools. We're going to need pickling salt, an airlock, mason jar lid that's able to attach to that airlock, and a mason jar. Now, our ingredients are three-fourths pounds of jalapeno peppers, one white onion, two garlic cloves, one to two yellow bell peppers, which are optional. I enjoy them just because they balance out the heat. Half pound of celery heart, which is also optional, which I'll touch back at later. One and one, and one half tablespoon of pickling salt for your brine. And two cups of filtered water, also for your brine. So, let's get it going. What do we need to do? First, we split open the peppers. I highly recommend to seed the jalapenos unless you really want your heat. Because they pack some heat. So... You're going to repeat that with your bell peppers. You're going to seed them, chop them up real thin. Don't need to dice them. Just get them thin enough, they'll fit in the mason jar. And you're going to repeat, repeat that with your onion. And when you get to your garlic, you take your cutting board, take a knife, put your garlic right there. You crush it up, separate it from its leaves, and you put the cloves right there. So take all of those good, delicious ingredients and you throw them in your mason jar. Now is the long wait. To start the long wait, we finish out. We combine the two cups of water with the one and a half, one half tablespoons of salt. Uh, you mix it around so the pickling salt isn't sedentary. It's mixed in with the water. And then you take your water and you dump it into your mason jar. You should leave about one inch of headspace so that you can let out hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. That's also what your airlock is for, is to let these gases out without letting oxygen in to possibly contaminate your food. Attach your airlock to your jar and you wait about three weeks. So, after the wait. After a few days looking into your jar, you will see bubbles coming to the top quite frequently, which is a great sign. This is a sign your ferment is alive. Bacteria are happily thriving. Things to be cautious of though are mold and other growths. Things that look unusual. A cloudy uh, sedentary substance can't appear and that's usually okay. But once you start seeing thin layers of white mold, that's when it's not okay. Do not open the container until you're ready to do something with these foods. <clears throat> so, let's make the sauce. Um, with all the yummy 
fermented foods ready to go, there's a couple ways we can go about this. Uh, when I mentioned earlier about the celery hearts, you can make a pepper kraut. Um, you're going to follow the later instructions to a T, except just add celery hearts. This will give you more of a chunkier pepper kraut type thing, as I like to call it, where you'll have to scoop it out of the jar instead of being able to shake it out of a hot sauce bottle. So we're focusing on the hot sauce, though. To start, you're going to strain your vegetables from the brine. But make sure you have a container underneath your strainer because you want that brine. We're going to use it later. Next, you'll need a blender or a food processor. Slowly start putting the vegetables and ingredients into the blender and you add brine as necessary to get the consistency that you want. If you want a chunkier sauce, less brine. A smoother, thinner sauce, more brine. Another uh, thinner that you can use is vinegar, which is very commonly used in a lot of hot sauces. Uh, it'll change the flavor profile some, but it'll thin it out for you if you want to get that good shake and pour out of that bottle. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.